Ever since the murder of John Lennon in 1980, the world was left in a labyrinth of conspiracy theories, rumors, and unanswered questions. Today I will be continuing to explain most of the conspiracy theories as possible, when also explaining my reasoning for his death. I, Flannery Films, present to you... Let's start with the superficial facts. John was born on October 9, 1940, during World War II in Liverpool, England. He was born on the 9th of October, 1940, when I believe the Nazis were still booming us, led by Madolf Hitler, who only had one. Anyway, they didn't get me. I attended the Varica schools in Liverpool and still didn't pass much to my auntie's supply. As a member of the most publicified Beatles, my and PG and R's records might seem funnier to some of you than this was book. But as far as I'm conceived, this correction of short Richie is the best laugh I've ever read. God help and breed you all. John's zodiac sign is a Libra, just in case you're interested like me. John got his first guitar when he was 14 years old. John was raised almost his entire life by his aunt Mimi, since his parents Julia and Alfred had frequent arguments and a messy divorce. John never respected his father, but he grew to still have a happy relationship with Julia. She was also a mother to two other girls, John's half-sisters, Julia and Jacqueline. Music ran in the family because Julia played the banjo and the ukulele. And on July 15, 1958, when John was 18 years old from getting hit by a car, This is a sudden and quite traumatic death for John to go through. And righteously, it's hard for anyone to ask for help. But we all know that men have trouble asking or admitting that they need help, especially back then, even though support and kindness should be a human right. John met Paul McCartney one fateful day when John performed at a church party with his first band, The Cory Men, the members being Pete Shotton, Colin Hanton, Chas Newby, Rod Davis, Stuart Sutliff, and John, of course, who was the lead singer. Back then, when he first met John, he always acted sort of arrogant and cunning. But when Paul first began his friendship with John, they shared one similarity eventually, one tender similarity. They both lost their mothers, and they loved each other like brothers. Soon, Paul introduced John to George Harrison, his friend from school. He was three years younger than John and they learned to have sincere respect for each other. Soon enough, the Beatles were formed. They had other names, such as Johnny and the Moon Dogs, the Silver Beatles, the Silver Beats. Then they finally decided the Beatles, spelt B-E-A-T-L-E-S, sounding like the insect, but spelt like beat, as in the rhythm. You might have heard some of their most popular songs, like I Wanna Hold Your Hand from the Meet the Beatles album, Come Together from the Abbey Road album, Something, and Love Me Do from the Please Please Me album. And if you don't believe that I love the Beatles, then here's my proof. Back in the 60s, coming out as gay was an incredibly daring choice. You'd risk losing all friendships and respect from your peers. Sadly, even if you didn't admit you were a homosexual and people thought you were, you would be harassed and misunderstood, and still to this day. It infuriates me that we treat each other this way, but because of these reasons, the Beatles all promised that they were straight. It's rumored John and Paul be had an affair on September 30th, 1961. John and Paul began hitchhiking from Liverpool to Paris. John got 100 pounds for his 21st birthday and invited Paul to come with him. They apparently had a great time. They stayed at a cheap hotel, sharing one bed. Paul even took a photo of John when he was sleeping, probably as a joke, but here it is. John even said, Paul brought me a hamburger to celebrate. I wasn't too keen on reaching 21. I recall one relative telling me, from here and now on, it's all downhill, and I really got a shock. I forgot to mention that John was married to Cynthia Lennon on August 23rd, 1962, and they eventually split up November 8th, 1968. 
Um, Paul McCartney's 21st birthday, 1963, John Lennon famously attacked Bob Wooler, who was the Cavern Club DJ in Liverpool. He basically accused John of sleeping with their manager, Brian Epstein, during their last holiday trip in Spain. I'll let John explain the rest from here. No, I don't like that waking up and thinking, what happened? Did I kill somebody? I mean, the Beatles' first national coverage was me beating up Bob Wooler at Paul's 21st party because he intimated I was homosexual, so I must have had a fear that maybe I was a homosexual to attack him like that, and it's very complicated reasoning. But I was very drunk and I hit him, and I could have really killed somebody there. Recent years, the McLennan fanbase started, and when I say recently, I mean the past 10 years. People ship John Lennon and Paul McCartney, and while I think it's cute, it's not fair and respectful to John Lennon because you don't know if he was gay or not, and to this day, Paul McCartney denies ever having relations with John. Okay, imagine you have a best friend that happens to be the same gender as you, and it's completely non-romantic, and you both already have partners. What if people started shipping you guys? Wouldn't that make you uncomfortable too? John Lennon's mother, Julia, had an affair in 1944 with a man named Taffy Williams. She cheated on her husband, Alfred, while he was in the war. She conceived a baby. She was also ashamed of being unfaithful to her husband, Alfred, but she wanted the best for her child. On June 19, 1945, Ingrid Peterson was born. She was given up for adoption, and she was adopted by an unnamed couple as a newborn. She lived her whole life not knowing who her real parents were. When a family friend visited and they were watching an interview of the Beatles, they pointed to John and said, that's your brother there. She waited until she was home alone and she rummaged through some old yellowing papers and found out that she was actually adopted with records from the Liverpool County Court. Sadly, she never got the opportunity to meet John, even though John really wanted to meet her when he found out one day at a family gathering. Now things began to get more serious. On December 8, 1980, John and Yoko recorded a session at Record Plant Studios. Their son, Sean, was five years old at the time. Here's a clip of John and Sean together while they were on vacation. day was pretty casual. John was in the middle of a long streak of success with his solo career. He was walking hand in hand with his wife to the Dakota building in New York City. It was a particularly warm December day for New York standards. John was approached by Mark David Chapman who asked for a simple autograph for his double fantasy album. When he was done, John generously asked, is that all? Chapman thanked him and said it was enough. Soon seconds later, John saw his life flash before his eyes. He was hit four times, hitting him in the back. He tried to run. The police were called. Chapman was arrested, reading the catcher of the rye. John was transported through a police car to the hospital where they tried to keep him conscious by asking him questions. One officer asked, are you John Lennon? He replied, yes. Sadly, this would be his last word before he died from excessive blood loss. Chapman was in police custody and after his trial, he was sentenced 20 years to life five years less than the maximum sentence for an insanity plea. Mark David Chapman was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, but this cannot excuse the human life that he just took. Mark was fascinated with the book The Catcher of the Rye. The main character, Holden Caulfield, despised phonies. Phonies to him were people untrue to themselves and others. Soon, Mark began to harbor a deep resentment towards John. Well-known and respected man, who preached for peace and love and equality while he still abused his first wife, Cynthia, who loved him no matter what and neglected his first son, Julian. John acknowledged he had problems with jealousy and being overly possessive, but it put a strain on his relationships and led to their divorce. He cheated on Cynthia with Yoko and ended up leaving her for Yoko. They did heroin as much as they drank water, and some say the Beatles broke up because of John's reckless behavior and his crazy relationship with Yoko. 
In conclusion, John definitely was a phony, but he was trying to tell the truth as well, and he expressed this through his music, his best talent.